Hi everyone. I'm a little bit sleepy this evening. It's just a part of my condition now where I just get really, really tired. So I thought I might just do a little bit about the folklore in Irish um, culture and all around sleep. And there's so much to do with sleep in Irish folklore. The first thing I wanted to talk about was a story I did a while back about Dermot and Gráinne. And one thing that I didn't mention in that story is that when they went to one of the caves, it was called um, Chach, uh, Dun, Chach Dun, uh, in the cave there was this magical bed and when you lay in the bed you would fall into an instant deep deep sleep and it was an enchanted bed so that it not only gave you a beautiful restful sleep but it also protected you while you were sleeping so Jermyn and Gráinne while they were on the run decided to use this bed to restore themselves so that they could try and continue their escape from um Fionn McCool at the time, so you might remember Gráinne had been engaged to Fionn, he was an old guy at the time, didn't love him and ended up casting a geish or a spell on Diarmid and uh, the two of them fell in love and they went on the run. Uh, now sadly they were caught in the end but uh, <laughs> in while they were on the run one of the places that they took shelter was at Chachdain which was a cave with this enchanted bed, so that's the first thing. The next thing I wanted to tell you about is sleepwalking. So in Irish folklore, I always heard this growing up. I was always told that it was dangerous to wake a sleepwalker. And there's also a belief that uh, if you were a sleepwalker and you were wandering about, you couldn't come to any harm. So you could literally walk off a cliff if you were a sleepwalker and you would be unscathed. Uh, or you could even walk across water and you wouldn't drown. There was all these kind of beliefs around sleepwalking. And another belief around people who sleepwalked was that they would always find hidden keys or lost keys. So one way to wake them up was to put the keys into a basin of cold water and that when they would take the keys out it would wake them. But this was said to be extremely dangerous and it could cause a heart attack. So that's the second thing about sleep that I wanted to tell you about on sleepwalking. So just beware of being gentle with your sleepwalkers. The next thing I wanted to mention is about the Fairy Queen. There's supposed to be a Fairy Queen hidden beneath uh, the hill at Nokma where I was before. And uh, the reason she's sleeping there is to actually protect the fairy folk. So if they were in danger or if there was a certain amount of chaos or turmoil in the world, she could protect the fairies by going into a deep sleep. And when she would sleep, the entire fairy realm would be hidden. So that's another thing about uh, sleep and the fairy queen and her enchanted sleep who could protect her people, her court. I mentioned when I was out in the Ox Mountains about the Kalyach who was said to have built the hills there by dropping stones from her apron. She's also said to um, control the weather well, there's another thing about the Kalyach that you might know. First of all, you might remember she's the um, goddess of, uh, she's like a, a, an old hag. So she's like the, the exact opposite of, say, Bridget and any of the youthful goddesses. This particular one is more associated with death, old age and all these kind of things that maybe might not seem so pleasant. But the Kalyach, anyway, this old, wise old hag, um is said that if you're asleep and you experience sleep paralysis, which is where you wake up, but you're unable to move. Well, if you experience that, it's because the Kalyach is on your chest and she is preventing you from moving. So that is the explanation around sleep paralysis, which is obviously a huge sense of impending doom and um, fear. So that's the Kalyach that can cause that. In my most recent video, sleep video, I mentioned about Balor and his evil eye and Lou's epic victory over him when he removed his eye by throwing a spear at him. Well, anyway, Balor, that whole idea around him and his eye, this um, unleashing of absolute chaos and destruction, uh, the thing was that he had to basically keep it closed all the time. And this is kind of a metaphor for sleep in that it's only by getting enough rest and getting enough sleep that we can prevent chaos from being unleashed in the world. 
So again, he was the leader of the Fomorians and uh, he was required to have enough sleep to prevent from destroying the world. And finally, a very famous thing about uh, Irish folklore and sleep is the whole idea of babies in particular, but anyone who needed protection from the she at night time, uh, they would place a piece of iron, so it might be a tongs, it might be a scissors, it could be a horseshoe, uh, under a bed or over a cradle or a crib. And the whole idea with that was to protect the sleeping person from the she. So in particular with babies, it was often thought there was this thing around um, children being stolen. And the whole idea of a changeling being put in the place of a child, uh, which is problematic to say the least, because I think it was just a way of people maybe explaining away um, children who would have had additional needs at the time and they just couldn't really understand it. So they would blame the poor child um, and basically deny them as their own child uh, and blame the, the fairies for having changed them and replaced them with a changeling. So that whole idea anyway is it's so sad to me. But um, the way that people would try and protect their children from this awful fate would be to place, as I say, a tongs or something iron because... The she, the fairies, were um, put off by iron. That was one thing that kept them away. So it was a protection over the child. And um, there's a lot of folklore around that. But as I say, it's to me, is just the saddest thing that a parent would be so uncomfortable and so, I suppose, threatened by a child with these particular needs that instead of maybe accepting them for who they were, they would blame the fairies and they maybe would treat the child poorly as a result because they wouldn't see it as it's, as their own. Um, but again, I suppose it's very easy to look back on things like that from a modern perspective now and say, oh God, it was awful. But actually, I suppose at the time, maybe people were suffering terrible hardships, you know, and not to excuse it, but I suppose it was a matter of life and death and survival and I don't know. I, to me, it's just super sad. But anyway, yeah, that's uh, a little few snippets of Irish folklore surrounding sleep. So now I'm off to get my Zeds because I am super, super sleepy. So, Ihawai and sleep well, all of you. Night, night.